Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Kelly and her Faye. I'm Kelly, and I have a rare neuromuscular disorder called Friedrich's ataxia, or FA. It affects my balance coordination, so I need to use a walker to get around. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. If you're returning, thank you so much for your support. Today, I thought it'd be fun to try out my new hair waver with you guys. It's um, bad head making waves. I have very naturally straight hair and I'm always looking for a way to give it a little more volume. And I thought, oh, touched the hot part. <laughs> I also have some questions and answers I wanna go over, do a little Q&A. You might already know, but I have been writing a blog for a couple of years called My Darling Life with FA. And one of my posts was a question answer. Um, so I asked my audience to give me their questions and I did my best to answer. So I thought I would go through that on this video and kind of like just do it in video format. My finger hurts. Oh gosh. So let's get to it. So I'm just going to put the top half of my hair up into a little claw clip to keep it out of the way. I should probably do some sort of heat protectant spray, but I never use heat with my hair, so I don't have any. Maybe someday if this works out well. We'll see. I'm also, I'm not the best at multitasking, so this might be more of like, do my hair, answer questions. <laughs> Do my hair, answer questions. So bear with me if you don't care about my hair. If you're interested in reading this post, I will link it and leave it in the description. So, if you'd prefer to read rather than watch a video, go for it. Okay, so first question. What was your childhood like? So, I was very active as a child. Um, I tried a lot of sports. I wasn't very athletic, but I was active. So I did a lot of sports, it wasn't very good. I did, I tried basketball, volleyball, hated basketball, <laughs> but volleyball was fun. I liked how it wasn't a contact sport. Like you were on your own sides of the net. And then in sixth grade, I started dance lessons. Um, I did jazz, ballet, a little bit of hip hop and a little bit of ballroom. I think it's one of the reasons I wasn't diagnosed with the FA until I was 18. It was a great workout, great stretching. I loved it, it was fun. I wasn't competitive, I just kind of did it for fun. Ballet was definitely my favorite. And then I danced all the way up to my senior year of high school. Um, my senior year, I did not want to dance anymore. My, so I, if you don't know, I was diagnosed with FA when, <coughs> I was diagnosed with FA when I was 18, a senior in high school, and so a few months before that, I did not want to dance at all my senior year. My parents really tried to convince me. Um, I think it definitely would have helped my progression, but I'm also, I want to be, I want to, I want to give myself grace for that. I clearly was not feeling comfortable with dancing. Um, 
and I didn't want my dance. So I'm proud of myself for kind of sticking to my guns. Since I'm only doing the bottom of my hair, I'm not going all the way to the top just to kind of avoid my ears. Next question. Were there any signs that you had FA and what led to your diagnosis? So I was very clumsy throughout middle school and high school. Um, as I said before, I wasn't super athletic. I, there was a time when I was playing volleyball and I couldn't run laps like everyone else and I started sobbing and it was a whole story. Um, and then in high school, it, I think my parents would say it definitely got worse. Um, I had to like tightly grasp the railings um, on the stairs. So going up stairs was a little bit easier, but going down I had to really like clench the railing. Um, and then also I had trouble on the bleachers. Um, they made me super, super anxious to the point where I think my junior, senior year, if I knew we were going to have an assembly or we, we would have all school mass in the gym, I, um, I got my parents to let me stay home because it was too stressful for me. Um, so I guess those were signs something was going on. We just thought I was clumsy and anxious and which is true. You know, we don't know. I went to, so I did have school, well I do have scoliosis. It's not super severe or extreme but I went to physical therapy because I thought that was causing my issues and went to physical therapy and worked on it and they just thought I was so clumsy and they, it was almost um, kind of hurtful because I remember they would just roll their eyes and be like, wow, this girl is just all over the place and I couldn't help it. Little did we know I have a neuromuscular disorder. And then finally, I think by primary care physician who I've been seeing for years, she um, referred me to a neurologist who then, my dad would be able to tell you more details. I kind of blurred it kind of blurred it out. I can't remember everything, but basically the neurologist like did one little test with me. Like he, there's a test a lot of FAers have to do where you like put your finger to your nose and to their, the tip of their finger and they move their finger around. So you have to like and be coordinated. It's pretty hard. He had me do that and wasn't as good as the average person. So then he was like, yeah, I think it's this. But he did a um, genetic test to make sure. And then we eventually found out it was FA. Okay, next question is, what was your reaction when you were diagnosed? So it was right before, like a couple of weeks before high school graduation when I was diagnosed. Um, to be completely honest, I don't remember everything. I think I kind of blocked it out of my memory. My dad, I'm sure, remembers everything. When I was diagnosed, I partly felt 
relief because now I knew it wasn't my fault. I was so clumsy and so like all over the place. Like my physical therapist said it was, I mean, it, it was devastating, but it was still relieving to find out that I'm, there's something legitimately wrong. I think that goes to show I put a lot of emphasis on like being perfect and working hard. I've always kind of been a perfectionist. So FA is kind of hard because you can't control what's going on. When I was diagnosed, the other part of me kind of left my body. Like it, I didn't really believe it was happening to me. It was like, um, Deni like instant denial. So the parts I do vividly remember is um, talking to my dad afterwards in the parking lot in the hospital garage, parking garage. And he, w he was very distressed, very upset. I could tell something. He told me that he thinks it means I'll be in a wheelchair someday. And I instantly did not really believe it. And I remember my response was, oh, can't they just give me a pill to fix it? Like, I have a disease, give me the drug to fix it. And he was like, well, actually it's a little more complicated than that and then i learned there was no treatment or cure for fa at that time we had a german foreign exchange student staying with us and so we had the whole i think there were like 10 german students staying with not staying with us but staying in the area and everyone would get together and have fun on the weeknights. And I remember that night, our German foreign exchange student, Masha, and my sister and the whole group, they went to go and play laser tag. And I also remember it was a very gloomy, stormy day. It was in May, so it was in the spring. And I remember just like going up to my room and just sitting there and like sobbing because I didn't know what was going on. I think I like it. I like it because with this tool, you don't have to be super coordinated to make it look good. It's just kind of a messy look. I do have to kind of, well, I did have to kind of run through my, run my hands through my hair or else it, it was too tight. It looked like ramen noodles before you cook them. Next question. Do you ever receive negative comments about your condition? Um, it's a tough one because I don't know what everyone says, but to my face, no. Um, I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by a really, really great community of people who are very open-minded open and generous and considerate and um, so no one has ever said anything to my face. I get 
weird looks from time to time, but I don't think that's intentionally mean. In college, I pretended FA did not exist. I wasn't using any mobility assistance and I didn't, I didn't receive negative comments. I more just experienced people thinking I was drunk when I wasn't, when I was completely sober. But at least um, it's a time where you can kind of get away with that. Um, because I was still walking freely, but my balance wasn't coordinated. So I would fall over, kind of walk sideways, or bump into things all the time. But now that I have a mobility aid, nobody is going to question that. Except I do have this one Russian troll on TikTok who uh, it's so it's actually so typical he like it has to be a joke but he thinks I'm drunk in every video and he likes to make jokes about how sad it is that I can't get my alcoholism under control and it's so funny because other Russian people who follow me comment back and like defend me and are like, dude, you're not funny. So, whatever, he seems like kind of an idiot. I think it's funny. I don't receive negative comments on there except from that one Russian dude. But in grad school, I did have some negative experiences. Um, not necessarily anyone saying a comment to my face, but, um, I just experienced advisors who were very not accepting of my condition. Someday I'll make a whole video and go into a little more detail. It's tricky because it's, um, it was a very hurtful and traumatizing time in my life and I don't want to throw anyone under the bus or make it seem like what was me but I also want to shed some light that the situation did happen and here's how I came out of it so that is a video idea for a different day someone asked is your condition progressive Yes, it is progressive. FA is progressive. It's gotten much worse since my diagnosis. I'm 27 right now. I was 18 when I was diagnosed. Um, but when I was diagnosed, like I said, I was just very clumsy and uncoordinated. And then a few years later in college, I, um, everyone thought I was drunk, and then a little bit later, in graduate school, I started to use a walker, and, you know, I use a walker a lot, or a scooter from going somewhere a little bit further. Ooh, my hair is frizzy. I think I'm gonna have to get, like, something to put on here. I don't know. Let me know if you have a recommendation. So last question, do you use a wheelchair? Yes and no. I have a wheelchair. It is somewhere in my parents' house. We wanted to get it covered by insurance in case I need it one day. It's there. It's ready for me. Um, I don't love using a wheelchair mostly because like when you have a bag you get very fatigued and it's hard to keep pushing and pushing yourself for longer distances so I'd rather use my scooter for longer distance because that takes no effort um, so I have a wheelchair but I don't really use it if that makes sense. That could change in the future. Just that's where I'm at right now. So yeah, those are all my questions and answers for 
this part one. Um, if you have another question for me, leave it below in the comments and I will try to do a part two soon. Answer some more questions. And also like feel free to reach out with any questions, comments, requests, suggestions. Um, I'm open and I have a lot of free time right now. So if you ask for it, I'm probably gonna do it. So leave a comment, it means so much to me and hit that subscribe, subscri subscribe button. Um, mean, it really means a lot. Thanks guys, see you next time.